Whether you're buying your first home or it's been a while since you have, it's always good to make sure you understand the entire process of what's going into making that purchase. Before I ever start showing homes to anyone, I like to have them come in and talk about the purchase pathway so they know exactly what to expect. So you're ready to buy a house. Seems pretty simple, right? Let's just look at homes and we'll find the one we want. Well, that's not necessarily the case. The first thing I do when I'm working with any new buyer is make sure that they come into the office so that we can figure out exactly what needs to go into making that search go well. Once I get those parameters, which will be the things they absolutely need and some of the things that they want, I can go ahead and get that search set up. We're currently in a limited inventory market, so it's important for me to make sure I cast as wide a net as possible to make sure that there's plenty of opportunity for them to find things online before we ever set foot inside a door. Also, I think it's imperative at this time to make sure you've got your financing lined out. At least have your pre-approval in hand, whether or not that's gonna be the bank that you ultimately go with, because if the time comes and you're ready to make an offer, especially in a competitive market like this, and you don't have a pre-approval, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity that someone else could get that house and you might miss out. Not only that, if you walk into a home and you absolutely fall in love with it and find out you can't get the financing, it's going to be detrimental to you and you're probably not going to be as excited to continue in the process as you were when you got started. Okay, once you get the financing and the search parameters and everything out of the way, it's time to start searching for homes. Looking online is an absolute great way to do that, but you also need to make sure that you're getting inside the house because pictures don't always paint the entire picture of the home. Make sure that you walk through the property and look it over with your realtor and ask any questions that you might have about the specifics of the home. After you find the one that you're ready to make an offer on first, you'll sit down and write up a contract. Now in the state of Indiana, our purchase agreements are eight page documents that outline everything that happens from the day you make the offer to the day you move into the house. I typically like to sit down face to face and write this offer up. Uh, it usually takes about an hour through the process because it's a great time for you to ask any questions that you might have about what's gonna happen during the transaction process. Not only that, it's a good time to discuss the earnest money deposit. This is a good faith deposit that we always ask to be put down with a contract, not a requirement, but if you have that money in hand, it's a good way to show just how serious you are about the house for the seller to consider your offer. Congratulations, you've got an accepted offer on the house. This is the time where the wheels start turning and things start rolling. The first thing that we're gonna do is actually deposit that earnest money. It's gonna go into the listing agent's escrow account and be held there until the closing. Next thing is have a home inspection. Now home inspections aren't required and they're not pass fail like many people assume, but they're great opportunities for you to find out everything about the home that you're purchasing. Not only that, it's gonna reveal if there's any kind of defects or anything else that we need to negotiate any repairs on with the seller of that home. While it's not required, I typically reserve the right for every buyer to have a home inspection, so even if you decide you don't need to have it done in the long run, you've got the opportunity to make sure that you can get it done throughout the process. After the repairs are all negotiated, everything's been done, it's always good to try to do a final walkthrough as well. Remember, you're buying a home, you're making sure that while someone else is living there, they're taking care of the property, nothing has changed since the time you made the offer, and you're double checking on those repairs to make sure everything's been done to your satisfaction. After that's all been squared away, it's time to schedule the closing. This is the time where you sit down and sign all the documents associated with the mortgage and the transfer of the title to make you the new owner of the property. The final step in the transaction process is the transfer of possession. And I know what you may be thinking, I thought I already closed on the property, now that I own it, don't I get possession? Well, it's customary in our area to, for the seller to retain some possession after closing. You're gonna know exactly how much time that's gonna be uh, whenever we write the offer on the property, and you're also gonna have an opportunity to talk to the seller at the closing if there is post-closing possession, so you have an idea of when that's gonna take place. But it's absolutely vital to make sure you get all that lined out so that you can get the keys to your new home and make sure all the utilities are on and everything is ready to go for you to move on in. Thanks for checking out the Aaron Advantage. If you want all of this information in a great document that I have, feel free to comment below and I'll send you the information so you can read through it more in depth. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with everything I post. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Aaron Advantage podcast. I threw a lot of information out there today, but feel free to let me...